All right, so when we left off, we had a pretty simple script. We have a health value. We have a, a method to reduce that health value. We have some conditional checks to check the value of the health and make sure it doesn't get to a certain point. If it does get to that certain point, then we kill the player. And our way of killing the player is doing a little print statement and then destroying the game object, right? So that's, that's pretty simple, but it gets a lot of topics or a lot of points out there. So now you understand quite a few things. And we even set up an object reference so you can reference another class. And that's really important. And one thing I just now thought about, I want to show you really quick that you can actually, you know how we did this with the player.health? One thing you can do is you can damage the player in here because you can call a method if you have a reference like we do or if it's a static method which we'll get into later on you can call it from the script you have the reference to so in our case we could say player script which would be here dot what was it called uh, damage uh, pl is it public no it's not public so let's make this a public we can type public in front of void and this will make it available to us in external classes, right? And uh, the way we do that is like I was trying to do is dot, oop, messed up there, dot damage player. Then we can call this method just like that. And notice that it'll tell us what parameters it wants and what arguments it's looking for. Now, a parameter is the variable that we set up. An argument is the value the method uses from that parameter, right? So <laughs> the parameter is the damage right here, the integer of damage. And the argument is the result of that, the value of that being used. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. <laughs> it made sense in my head. So the now we have to pass a an argument to that parameter, which will then be used, oh, bump the microphone, which will then be used in that method. So we can do, uh, let's do a lot of damage so we can see it's working. We'll do a lot of damage, but I think it'll be reset to zero, right? Yeah, so we'll, I'll comment this out. That's another thing. Uh, commenting, you do the double slash, and uh, if you want to do a multi-line comment, you do the slash with the asterisk, and then to close that, you'll do the slash after the asterisk just like that and inside of mono develop if you're inside of a comment like this and you hit enter it will automatically add an ask an asterisk there for you and you can type in here and everything you type within a comment doesn't get uh, compiled it doesn't get processed so you can leave yourself little notes throughout the th throughout your scripts and show you or, or tell you what is going on where because believe me when you write a lot of stuff, later on, you'll come back and read it and be like, what is going on? What am I doing? I don't know what's going on. And these comments will be a lot of help because you're not going to remember all of the stuff that's going on in your scripts just because you wrote it months ago, right? You'll forget about it and you'll need some refreshing and the refreshing will be the comments. So I want to comment this out. So now this will not be processed. Hit control S, come in here. I forgot what we what we did, so I don't know what I'm looking for exactly. What did we do? Oh, I'm doing damage, that's right. So I want to look at the player. Now he should go down like 10,000 life. Yeah, boom, or 100,000 life. And that is, uh, it's pretty cool, right? All right, so I mentioned you could access it without a reference if it was a static method. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, if we go to demo.cs here, I have void, right? When we have void, that means it returns nothing. And this was a public before I messed around with it. So when it's a public, you can access it if you have a reference to it. And it uh, that's okay, right? That's most of the time, that's what you need. But sometimes you're going to have a class that contains a method that uh, is never going to be different depending on where it's at. So say you have health, right? Health will always be different depending on the object it is attached to. So you have enemies in your level. All these enemies will share or will not share health. They will all have individual health values. 
And so that means you cannot make the health value of enemies static or yeah, static because they would all share that. Everything that shares that class would then share all the same health values because health is a static value, which means it does not change depending on the object. So that goes the same pretty much for methods. But to get my point across that you can do this without a reference, a static variable or a static method can be accessed without a reference. So I can just say demo dot damage player because demo is the class name. So I'm accessing it through the class going down. It's finding all the things that are static and saying, hey, you can access this now. And that's pretty cool, right? Notice I cannot access health though, right? I don't think I can. <laughs> should be able to. Yeah, I can't access health. I can only access what is static in that class. So if I was to make health static, I know I shouldn't, I, didn't, I don't have to show you this because it makes sense now, but now I should be able to access health. There's health. That's pretty cool, right? Uh, you won't find yourself using static variables and methods as much as you think, because most of the time you'll understand, you'll, you'll realize that the other way is, is the way to go. But static, uh, static methods and variables do have uses. They're, they're very useful, trust me. But most of the time you'll get away with public, with object references. All right, so in this part, we've got nothing done, right? I've just been talking a lot, which is fine. I, I want to get some stuff across, but what this part's supposed to be about is not about what I was just talking about. It was supposed to be about arrays. And arrays are a pretty complex beginner property. You have to understand what arrays are. They are very important to any kind of programming. Doesn't matter what you're doing. You have to understand an array. So I want to make sure I can uh, I explain this uh, the best way I can. Now, if you followed my WordPress series, you, you, I've already taught you arrays. You know what an array is, but if you haven't, then I'm going to teach it to you kind of the same way I did before. And I hope it works in this context as well. Now, an array is, think of it as a variable. You know, a variable can hold a value, right? Just like health holds a health value, but an array can hold multiple values. And these are identified with a number, with a key, which would be, say you have an array. Let's make an array. To do that, I want to say public. You don't have to be public, but I want to show you it in the Unity Inspector. And we're going to make a public array of, what do we want to make? Let's do, let's just do an int because we've been working with those. And we'll get into the other stuff uh, probably in the next tutorial. But for now, we'll do an int. And the way we do an array is we don't just set the type like that. Now, int is the type of variable, right? But we want to set it so it knows that it's going to be an array, which means it will contain multiple integers, not just a single integer. And the way we do that is with open and close square brackets. So now this knows, hey, this is an array of integers. And I'm going to call this array, array integer very clever now it, an array is is very important and there's a it's, it's a it's a way to store data right but there are other data storage containers that are as important if not more important well no i would say array is the most important then you work away from that to other things but an array isn't dynamic which means you set the the amount of items that are in an array. But what we have now is we have a public array of integers called array int. Now, if I, now that should be it, right? If I hit control S and we come in and we look, what we can do is now we can go to our inspector. Now this is so cool. This is the, probably the coolest thing about the unity inspector is the way that it, it interacts with different data types in the inspector. Now an array has this little drop down arrow and you'll see a size. Now this is what I was talking about where you define the size of the array. Now this can all be done in the class itself, in the script, but I wanted to show you this because you'll be working this quite a bit, I'm sure. Well, I know we will, so I guess you will too. But what I want to show you, say I hit, 
I want to add five, or that's a two. And that means there's going to be two spaces in this array that we can store information. The information we can, we can store, though, has to be the same type that the array is, which is an integer. So I hit two. Now we have elements. Now, since this is just like that, it's an integer, but it's down here, well, then I can drag the, the values of these. So now this array contains two values, and they are, the values are set here, 30, 47. So what can I do with those values? And I'll show you here in a second how we can assign these in, in code as well. I just want to show you quickly like this. What can we do with these values? Well, like I said, they are stored with a key. So you have, it goes from zero and it ascends from there. So zero, one, two, three, four. So in this case, element zero is the zero key, right? So 30 is the first space in the array. And so the way I get, get the number 30 from the array is I look at the first space, which is zero. Arrays start at zero and go up. So what we can do is in the update, we can print this out. Print, I wanna say array, int, there it is, fills it out for me. And now the way I access that is the square brackets again, open and close. And inside of this, I will put the key of the value I'm looking for, which in this case is zero. So now it's gonna go through the array and say, okay, the one you're looking for is zero, which is the first one. The value of that is whatever the value is set here or here, here in a second. Now, if I go here and I click play, it'll print 30, we got 30. Now I can change this to 47 or to one, which would be 47 because that's the value of that space and there's 47. So that's pretty cool, right? I hope that gives you an understanding of what arrays are. Arrays are just ways to store things, to store values. And you can store different things. You can store strings. So if I make this a string, now a string, I think we went over strings, maybe not, is a text, a string of text. It can contain numbers or whatever. I'll just show you. So a string would be inside quotations, just like this. And I could say, I'm nine years old and all these things and whatever and that would be a string it doesn't matter as long as it can be processed as text it will go inside of the string so if we have a string and then i'm gonna call this array just to keep it consistent array string now if we go out here this will all change and it'll cause an error array int does not exist because i did not change this to array string I hit control S, come out here, the error should go away. And now this changes to array string and we lose all of our values because they aren't allowed in a string type. They were integers, right? But now if I was to hit two again, we have this and there's no more slidey thing because they're not integers. And I can type text in here and I'll tab down and I'll say awful, I'm in the scene view, <laughs> awful media. And there's that. Now in here, it should print out now awful media. And it will. Awful media. And I could do one or zero and it'd be Austin. You get it, right? So there's other things we could do with this. There's different types, but that's the basics of arrays. Okay, so now we set values to an array inside the inspector, right? But how do you set the values of the array in code itself? Well, it's uh, it's a bit different because you have to you have to define the length in code and then you have to set the values of the keys of the ones you of the length. So you, okay, so you set the length ten. Now the array consists of ten spaces, and then you have to define what goes in each space. It sounds simple and it is simple. So we have public string equals array string. So we have it defined. Now we want to set the the length. It's referred to as length when you're talking about arrays because it is just it's how long it is, right? <laughs> Zero to whatever. When we get into dynamic arrays, it'll be referred to as a count. So it's going to count each one because the array or the, the list is it, it expands based on what you add to it. They're cool. We'll talk about those. But we have a public string. Now we're going to set up the start here. And we're going to do this stuff in start, which we talked about already. And what we want to do is say string, or no, it's array string, array string. 
equals, and we're gonna do a new. Now we're gonna have string. And then inside of these square brackets now, we will define the length of this array. And I will say, we'll, we'll make it five. So now array string, which we declared here, array string now has five empty spaces. And then now what we set in start, we can set the values of each one. We won't go through all of them, but some of them. So I'll say array string. Then we're gonna find the key of the one we want to set. I wanna set the first one, which is zero, to equal a string. And the string can say, I'm cool. Okay, and then we can set another one, array string, do that, one, and it equal to another string. And this string will say, uh, no, you're, you're not. Okay, so now I set two values of a string, of an array that contains five spaces. Now you'll see that the size of the array is five, and two of the spaces, it killed the player. Uh, let's turn off the player being destroyed while we look at this. I'll just comment that out. We click play again. We'll go back to the player here. You'll see that the length of the array is five. Two of the spaces are filled and we have three empty spaces. Okay, but if I type stuff in here and hit enter, that'll stay there, right? No, because it's only during runtime when this exists. It's not like setting it in the inspector, right? It's a bit different. This happens during runtime. When the game stops, if you wanted to continue to have these values that you set during runtime in that array, you will have to save them to the player's computer, which is a topic for another video. Hit the mic again, but we'll definitely get to that. So that is the basics of arrays. Uh, we got this stuff, uh, got it down really good, I think. So if you like what you see, I would really appreciate it if you could leave me a comment below if you have any feedback, that'd be great. I like feedback. I will I actually, I take feedback and do stuff with it. I don't just ignore it. Uh, check out my Google Plus page if you are not, if you, if you don't hate Google Plus. And follow me on Twitter at awfulmedia.